Hey, this is George with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel and podcast helping new hunters get started and helping active hunters learn new things. Today it is negative two degrees in Pennsylvania and it is the perfect day to do a cold weather beanie experiment. We're gonna test five different beanies or at least five different beanie constructions to see which one holds up best in extreme cold weather. I've got the Sitka Fanatic top of the list. I've got the Cabela's MT-050 equivalent Windstopper Gore-Tex beanie. I've got the First Light Furnace 350 Merino beanie. I've got the First Light Tundra Balaclava. And then I've got the $10 Amazon Special. We're gonna put these five beanies to the test. Now I did a full review and description of these five beanies. I'll link to that video below. I'm not gonna get into the details for each one. You can watch that. But let's cut right to the test and see which one performs the best. All right guys, first things first. Got the thermometer, negative 1.5 out here. I just took this water off of boiling <clears throat> and it is 210. So now we're gonna pour it into six cups. Evenly, as evenly as we can. I'll make some fine adjustments here at the end. This is super hot. So we're gonna use the exact same cups for each one. Fill them all up there, try to get them as even as I can. Pour out some of the ones that have extra. And get these pretty close to even. Now we'll put our lids on them. All right, now we will set up the cups and we will cover each one of them with a hat. And then we will have our control cup. All right, so we'll take our first reading right now. So we're already down to 192. So we've got the control and then we will cover each cup. And I'll try to get, you know, a little bit tight around the base. And then what we'll do is every 10 minutes, we will take, we'll come in, we'll pull the hats off and we will see how much each one has cooled down compared to the control cup, which gets no hat. All right, so we'll see you back in 10 minutes. All right, we are back at our 10 minute mark. So first we're gonna test the control and 161. Losing a lot fast, next we'll do the furnace. <clears throat> 174, next we'll do the Tundra, also 174, next we'll do the Sitka, 179, next we'll do the Cabela's, 175, and then the Amazon Special, 173. All right, we're back at the 20 minute mark. And in case you are wondering, I am doing rolling 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes from the first one. because I know it takes a little bit of time to get through them all. So they're all getting tested at exactly 10 minute increments. 136.8, 160 even. 163 on the Tundra. 170 on the Sitka. 166, 160 even. All right, see you back in 10 minutes. 117 degrees, 147, 149, the Sitka, 161, 156, 148. All right, we're back at the 40 minute mark. And yes, I am using a foam board underneath the cups just to provide some even insulation. Looks like our control is at 101, 136, 141, 154, 147, 138. All right, we're at the 50 minute mark. Our control is at 188, excuse me, just 88. 126, 131, 145, 140, 130. 
All right, guys. Well, I went ahead and called it after the 50 minute mark. Uh, after that point, we had some fluid spillage, we had some airflow gaps, and I feel like the data at the 50 minute mark is the most robust and it just gives us the best information on how to evaluate this. And they're, they're pretty consistent fall. I'll put the graph up in a moment, but first a word from our sponsor of this video, oh, that would be me. I bought all this stuff myself. I paid for the water, paid for the cups, paid for the electricity to heat it up, made the video. Nobody paid me a penny to do this, but I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that thumbs up button. That helps the channel, helps this video to reach more people. Every thumbs up is appreciated, and it helps if you found this video interesting or helpful. So let's jump to the results. I'll throw the chart up for you guys. At the 50 minute mark against our 88 degree control, the sit cup predictably came out on top at 145 degrees. So it was the best performing of all of them. Uh, after that came the Cabela's at 140 degrees, followed by the First Light Tundra, followed by the $10 Amazon Special, and then followed by the First Light Furnace. Now this test is not the be all end all. It's not all that realistic in terms of a field test, but it is an objective experiment with real data that we tried to keep as robust as possible. So what I found interesting from this, I had a couple learnings and takeaways. One, the things that performed best were the thickest items and the items that had the best barriers. The Sitka has Gore-Tex. The Cabela's also has Gore-Tex. They are both windproof. So that Gore-Tex barrier seemed to be uh, a big deal here in preventing that heat from escaping, especially at the higher temperatures. Now the Sitka is also insulated with Primalof, so it held the heat better than the Cabela's did. What I thought was very interesting, I expected the Tundra to perform better than it did. In the field, I found the Tundra to be warmer than the Cabela's if there isn't much wind. If there is wind, though, that Gore-Tex seems to really make a big difference and then come into play. Now, the, the Walmart special, or excuse me, the Amazon special at $10 beating the furnace, I thought was very interesting and surprising, but it's a double layer hat. It has two layers, they're cheap, but those two layers did better at keeping the heat in and keeping the cold out than the furnace did. Now I said in my review video that the furnace is not a great standalone hat, but it is in my opinion the single best layering hat that you could do. So because it's made of merino, because it's so thin and so small and can fit under almost anything and coupled with any other hat, can give you a super hat. But as a standalone piece, it was the lowest performer because it's the thinnest, air passes right through it, there are no layers to hold that heat. Now guys, this is uh, very interesting. And it does show that the cheap hat, that the Walmart special or the Amazon special, wherever you get your cheap hat, can perform well. Now I should say with the Tundra, it is a balaclava. So it's not just a hat, but it's a full face mask. It's full around your neck. I often wear that to protect my whole head and neck. And then I will throw another hat on top of that on days and times that it's really cold or windy. So it's not necessarily designed to be a standalone Arctic piece. Although it does that job, I think better than this data gives it credit for. Of all the pieces, I expected that one to perform better. But you have to think, what are these things made to do? What are they constructed for? Things that do have a windproof barrier are going to outperform in most situations. Now, if you're running and pick working up a lot of sweat, you know, those things with the Gore-Tex are just going to collect a lot of sweat and that moisture is not going to escape as well. But that may be what you need in days when it's windy, rainy, snowy, whatever the case may be. So the goal here of this video was not just to say which one of these is best, but to help reveal the applications that they perform well in. And I hope this is helpful for you guys. Please hit that thumbs up button. Click subscribe if you enjoyed this video. We got lots of others that you can see. Head to the website newhuntersguide.com for 180 plus episodes of the podcast, gear, every different kind of hunting to help introduce you or up your level of game for whatever you're pursuing. Really appreciate you. Till next time, God bless you and go get them in the woods.